So, we were discussing about that uh, milk fat and uh, while doing that we said we will also try to give some chemistry of the fat otherwise uh, it may be difficult to understand right. So, we came up to saturated fatty acid saturated right. Now, if we if this was our last class. Now, from the saturation if we go to unsaturation uh, here of course, uh, some of the things have gone beyond. Uh, so, essential fatty acids are those which man or animals cannot synthesize for example, polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFA such as linoleic acid. In earlier class, we have seen that uh, depending on oleic acid, depending on linoleic acid, uh, there the number of unsaturations are 1 or 2 or somewhere it was 3. So, linoleic acid is one such where it is double bond, two double bonds and we call it to be polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFA. This I said in the last class also that uh, people do uh, capitalize their advertisement on that because this unsaturated fatty acid the uh, human being or animals they are not able to synthesize in their body system. So, that is the why they are called essential. Why essential? Because they are not being synthesized by the body. So, that has to be supplemented externally right and that is the key word which the oil producers different they do capitalize the advertising that they have polyunsaturated fatty acid in their oil whatever be the vegetable oil or whatever be the other oil right. And uh, you if you remember we said that uh, um, this olive oil olic acid which is also uh, unsaturated fatty acid that do contain around 70 80 percent in the olive oil, right Where, whereas safflower uh, that contains around 60 to 80 percent depending on again depending on what is the source of safflower where from it is coming where it is grown up how the processing is done all factors come into and it varies between 60 to 80 percent of the unsaturated fatty acid available right linoleic acid there but we call polyunsaturated PUFA linolenic acid where it is more than one unsaturation is there right. So, normally these are acyl derivatives of glycerol right where this is the glycerol this has uh, this double bonds right uh, not double bonds so this acyl uh, groups right this is mono this is di and this is tri right. I you remember I said the acyl group to be that C O R sorry C O R right. This was C C O R right. This is the unsaturation uh, uh, this is called the acyl group and uh, this R can be anything right. So, there this acyl derivative of the uh, glycerol that is either monoglyceride or diglyceride or triglyceride this can be said to be mono this can be said di and this is triglyceride right. So, with this basis let us now proceed to uh, the milk fat right. So, if we look into that milk fat it is commonly known as butter fat. Milk fat is commonly known as butter fat and generally it is varying between say 2.5 to 6 percent could be lower could be higher depending on 
the source again depending on the source depending on the species etcetera this may vary, but for 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 simplicity to have the idea to make it uh, general we call it around uh, 3 to 6 percent right 2.5 is also a uh, uh, odd number 3 to 6 percent generally we call that fat content in milk right because cow milk contains less buffalo milk contains more that we have seen in the earlier class right and uh, so 3 to 6 percent is the commonly milk contains fat. Now, these fat molecules are this fat of course, they are not said molecules they are said globules because they are like this they are like this. So, this is a fat globule right and in this globule there is a fat globule membrane there is a fat globule membrane. So, this membrane is there and uh, that is called F G M or fat globule membrane. So, it is made up approximately 98 percent triglyceride 0.2 percent to 1 percent phospholipids and 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 percent sterols. Phospholipids and proteins are mostly associated with the FGM that is the um, uh, that is the milk uh, this is fat globule uh, membrane. So, this fat globule membrane contains phospholipids and proteins mainly and uh, in, in, in milk fat it is around 98 percent triglyceride 0 0.2 to 1 percent uh, phospholipids and 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 percent sterols uh, in, in the milk fat right. Now, if we get around 18 to 25 percent fat, so that fat is called uh, single cream or coffee cream or light cream or table cream. So, any name that can be between 18 to 25 percent. So, not less than 30 percent they are called light whipping. So, whipping I, I remember that uh, it is coming to my mind now that I had said it that uh, whipping means when you are incorporating air right like like when you are doing omelette and other things with egg that time you do stir it and during the stirring what you are doing you are incorporating air into it that is why it is becoming fluffy. Other is omelette just like that you try one day without fluffy without doing that you just put it and do that uh, with uh, omelette or whatever we call that uh, if you make the the thickness uh, will be very 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 less whereas if you do the studying you will see that it has become a little bit floppy the same quantity but appears to be more so that is why it is more lucrative and more uh, may may not be by 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 nutritive value you are changing everything but the aesthetic value of the food you are changing so that is where the the the, the this uh, your uh, this thing is uh, whipping is very much required right so in that sense if it is less than 30% then it is called light whipping if it is more than uh, le uh, not less than 36% then it is called heavy whipping and if it is uh, more than 60 to 80% then that is called plastic or extra heavy cream right plastic or extra heavy cream. Similarly, butter contains around 82.5 percent plus minus 82.5 percent cream and butter oil contains not less than 98 to 99.5 percent fat 
cheddar cheese contains around 30 to 40 percent fat, ice cream around 8 to 20 percent, evaporated milk not less than 8 percent and whole milk contains 26 percent. Now, all these exist in milk in the form of minute globules right just in the previous slide I have shown minute globule. So, in a true this is a true emulsion of oil in water O w oil in water true emulsion where the emulsion means there is a continuous phase and there is a dispersed phase. The continuous phase is one which is more in quantity that is continuous phase. In this case water is the more quantity more com uh, more component quantity wise component and in that the oil or fat is there that is why it is called oil in water. Similarly, in butter it is the reverse where is more component is the fat that is uh, 80 to 83 percent less quantity is uh, water. So, that is called uh, fat, uh, that is called water in oil uh, right one is O w and other is W o emulsion. Okay. Each globule of fat is surrounded by a very thin film of protein or the serum of milk that is concentrated on the surface and held in place by surface attracting or some adsorption material by either surface attracting material or by absorp adsorption if this is there. The, the concentrated layer surrounded uh, the fat globule is composed of certain protein and fat like substances especially that is called lecithin and the other day I said about lecithin uh, the, 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 the study of the uh, the story of the uh, Sas Bahu I said uh, now I remember hopefully here we had finished up. Okay. So, milk fat that contains traces of fatty acids some vitamins like A D E K and some enzymes right. More than 400 different fatty acids of which predominance are there are more than 400 fatty acids right. Now, as we have seen fatty acids can be of anything which of bigger carbon right. So, more than 400 obviously, in your mind it may come Sarah has said long chain fatty acids, short chain fatty acids there is a true 2 to 80 carbon number of carbons right the you said they are naturally occurring, but predominantly between 2 to 20 beyond 20 or 24 it is in the family of waxes. In the lipid family it may be even higher right. So, 400 different fatty acids are there. Now, this fatty acid suppose one fatty acid is like this you see this is one carbon this is uh, the two hands this is the third hand right and this is the fourth hand. So, if this is with one carboxylic acid right if this is with one methyl group this is one methyl group this is one methyl group then that can be how many 1 2 3 4 5 right or if it if it is CH instead of CH 3 if it is instead of CH 3 this is the eraser. So, if we make it like this that if it is if it is CH 2 CH 3 right this group you put. So, that 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 membered right. So, after that butyric we have said that was I to my memory it is either capric uh, capric acid to my memory right. So, there either capric or caprylic hopefully capric acid. So, there it is 
C 6, but that was straight chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then C O O H right. So, this was straight, but here it can be like this. So, how the stereo chemically they are? So, depending on that different uh, fatty acids, though same number, different fatty acids could be there. That is why, though we said C2 to C80, so automatically it comes. So, there should not be more than 70, 80, 80, 80 uh, numbers of. Uh, fatty acids, but it is not so. This is innumerable. So, that is why we are saying that more than 400 different fatty acids are predominantly in milk fat, out of which are in milk fat, out of which predominance are myristic acid, which is C4 with 0, that is no double bond, palmitic acid with C16 with no double bond, stearic acid with C18, no double bond and oleic acid with C 18 with a single double bond. Right? So, around 400 different uh, fatty acids are there in milk. Right? Predominance are C 14, 16, 18 with single or uh, no double or saturated. Right? They are predominant. Okay? Then lipids, proteins, cerebrosides, nucleic acid, enzyme, trace elements, minerals, trace elements like minerals, some bound water stabilize and prevent fat globule from coalescence during milk processing and handling. So, all these factors like presence of lipids, presence of proteins, then cerebrosides, nucleic acid, enzyme, trace quantity of minerals or elements, some bound waters, these stabilize that is the primary, these stabilize and prevent milk fat globules to coalesce, coalesce means coming together and bonding. Now, I remember I said that uh, the thermometer breaking and getting that uh, mercury uh, droplets or globules and when they are coming together they are they are agglomerating. So, this is also a kind of agglomeration of the fat globules and this prevents those fat globules to come and close come close and form the bigger molecule right. So, now let us go perhaps we had we are said. Now, FGM this prevents attack from the lipase. Up subsequently, when we will go to other constituents of milk, there you will see that there are n number of enzymes present in milk, n number of enzymes are present in milk. right? In many occasions, I am saying that uh, in our saliva, the it also contains lot many numbers of enzymes that too it activates it comes when you are chewing that is why you were asked you are said that do not grab the food you chew and the during this chewing that saliva secretion is secreting enzymes right. So, milk contains naturally many numbers of enzymes so, one such enzyme is lipase. Now, lipase is one and any enzyme by this time hopefully you know as I, I am saying that as and when things are coming I am trying to explain a little more. So, enzyme their name as ASE any enzyme is ending with ASE right like lipase L I P A S E right. So, with lipase means the enzyme which is acting on the lipid. Right, lipid was the bigger umbrella in which fat is also there. So, enzymes which act on lipids are called lipase. Right? So, these fat globule membranes they do protect the fat from the action of the lipase. Otherwise, 
Otherwise, these fat molecules, since lipase the enzyme is there, it will see its food is there, food is that fat, so fat is there, so go it goes and breaks, that is what is its work. So, where, wherever free fats are like that available, then go and break it, that is the lipase enzyme's activity, but it is not able to because the globule is already protected by the fat globule membrane, which is we have said that some protein, some lipo, uh, uh, some lipoproteins and uh, some enzymes are also there. right? So, free fatty acids are fairly soluble in water and are situated in milk, plasma and fat free fatty acids are fairly soluble in water and are, and are situated in milk, plasma and fat. Right? Short chain fatty acids, short chain fatty acids situated in the milk plasma are ionized and are more water soluble than long chain free fatty acids. Where this long chain is more than carbon number 14. Right? This long chains are more than carbon number 14. Minerals associated with the fat globule membrane are copper generally between 5 to 25 percent, iron between 30 to 60 percent. Other minerals include cobalt, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, manganese, molybdenum and zinc, they are also present. We will come more in detail about when we are talking about the minerals content in milk. Right? Now, compound lipids also occur in milk such as phospholipids and phosphatides. Right? phospholipids or phosphatides that are situated mainly in the fat globule membranes, but also in milk plasma, lipoproteins and milk micro, microsomes it is present. Phospholipids and phosphatides are highly surface active and polar and dissolve poorly in both water and oil. Right? Lipids can be crystallized which affects fat structure, melting range, rheological properties of milk. Right? So, these lipids can be crystallized which affects that means, me, lipid content in milk that affects the fat structure of the fat, melting point of the fat or melting range of the fat, then rheological properties of the fat. Obviously, rheological property how in, in which the viscosity comes primarily in um, into the picture. Right? Ox, auto oxidation that is auto oxidation where it is oxidation by itself of the double bond containing fatty acids or fatty acid residues can occur leading to off flavors. Now, if there are there are lipids present in uh, milk not if milk contains lot of lipids. So, these lipids may undergo auto oxidation and of course, this oxidation will come subsequently in more in detail. Right? So, there this auto oxidation may produce off flavor in the milk which is of course, not desirable. Right? Then we come to this that whole milk contains about 10 to 20 milligram per 100 gram milk cholesterol. So, 10 to 20 milligram cholesterol per 100 gram of milk that is around and where milk is around 3.3 percent. 
right fat amount of cholesterol is positively correlated with the amount of fat present in the product or in this case milk right obviously if the fat content is low then the cholesterol content also will be low if the fat content is high the cholesterol content also will be high that is why it is said 10 to 20 milligram though the number is 10 and 20 not so big but in milligram per 100 gram of milk so that is not very 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 small right if you convert it in terms of ppm it will also be a good in number right so ppm means parts per million right so gram and milligram is 10 to the 3 so when it comes to 10 to the 6 then it comes to ppm right so this you convert and see that it is several hundreds or thousands of ppm that 10 to 20 milligram right and cholesterol is located in the in the globule membrane and approximately 10 percent of the cholesterol is uh, stratified approximately 10 percent of the cholesterol is esterified right because cholesterol so with o l ending with o l anything well ending with o l normally is hydroxyl having hydroxylic group right hydroxyl group is uh, associated with the naming of that ending with o l so cholesterol is such who that means there is also hydroxyl group present the moment hydroxyl group is there so there uh, there are fatty acids so these free fatty acids will come and join with the cholesterol thereby binding them in in the form of ester right that's what it is it is seen that around 10% of the cholesterol is esterified and these cholesterols are located in the globular membrane that outside coating of the uh, fat globule in that fat globule outside membrane is the cholesterol present and that is generally a 10 percent is esterified. Now, size of the fat globule it varies between 2 to 30 microns we said earlier also. So, the lower the size more is the number the higher is the size less is the number right because uh, bigger size will have less in number smaller size will have much more in number right and in one class we said that this fat globules can be seen also in the microscope uh, that they uh, with, with glycerol as the medium then they will be this globules will be dancing right and uh, please tell me that uh, this by which law this can be said right this is the free movement of the fat globules i i give this as the hint uh, single drop of milk contains about 10 to the power 8 right 100 thousand thousand so 10 to the power 8 number of fat globules a single drop a single drop and one drop is how much one drop normally we say a drop which comes out from pipette or buret uh, that drop is around 0 0.05 ml 0 0.05 ml so 0 0.05 ml this contains 10 to the power 8 number of fat globules now imagine that one liter half a liter how many numbers of fat globules will be there right and that is why more and more we are saying about the stability of the fat that one it is stabilized by the uh, lecithin 
as the emulsion and then the fat globule membrane that is where cholesterol is also playing an active role as it is also a part which is uh, forming in the uh, membrane and this 10 percent of the cholesterol is also getting esterified with the free fatty acids. right? So, with this our time is over now. Uh, let us come and next again we will continue with the composition of the milk fat. So, many things are there to know so many and we will we'll definitely um, will definitely cover as much as possible in both in terms of chemistry as well as the physics of the entire thing. Because this is the one which we need to understand and once we are then any kind of processing we will be much better off than corresponding may be mechanical or chemical people who may not be doing inside of it so much. Right? Thank you.